be here for a while. I think I'll just go back to the motel and pick up my things. Okay, I'll be here. Hey, why don't I give you the key to the front door so you can come and go as you please? Great. Do you have your own car? No, I'm afraid I don't. Well, how are you going to get back to the motel? Well, if you let me use your phone, I thought I would just call a cab. Oh, that's ridiculous. Use my car. It's just sitting out in the driveway. And I'm not going to be using it all morning. Then you're more than welcome to take it. <laughs> that's very generous, but are, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. There are the car keys. Now you go out the back door, and the car is sitting right there. Well, this is very kind of you. I'd... I don't know how to thank you. Well, you're very welcome. I'm going to like living here. I can see that already. Well, I'm sure I'm going to like having you here, dear. Well, I won't be long. But it's all right. Take your time. I'm Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I hope I'm not bothering you. My sister told me about your friend, Professor Bruner. I'm, I'm really sorry. Oh, Tony, thank you. Yeah. Won't you come in? Thanks. Would you like some coffee, dear? No, thank you. I, I uh, just came to ask you about something, if, if I'm not bothering you. Well, I'd be glad to do whatever I can. What do you want to know? Uh, well, it, it's about your husband. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about Bill. This portion of Guiding Light is presented by Safeguard for great deodorant soap protection, plus a rich lather and a clean, fresh scent. And by Mild Ivory Liquid, it helps hands stay young-looking. Bill. What do you want to know about Bill? Uh, well, I found this, this old camera uh, of my dad's in my house, and it had some film in it, and mm -hmm. I went and had the film developed. Mm hmm and? And I'd like you to take a look at one of the pictures, if you would. All right. Uh, show it to me. Great. <laughs> I uh, showed it to my mom. She said she wasn't sure which one, but that one of those guys was, was your husband. Yeah, that's Bill. Boy, I tried for ten years to get him to quit wearing that hat. <laughs> well, what about it? Um, well, they, they used to organize this, this fishing trip every year. That, did you know that? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Well, anyways, Bill hired my dad to be a guide on, on those trips. Yes, I knew that, too. You knew my dad? I... Uh, did you ever mention that to my mom or Maureen that you knew my dad? No, I never mentioned it to your mother because I didn't want to upset her. Well, thank you. Um, well, anyway, do you, do you know who any of the other guys in this picture... Well, I really didn't take that close a look. Uh, would you mind looking at it again? Tony, I really don't want to talk about that fishing trip. <sighs> Mrs. Bauer, I'm not trying to push you or anything in it. I know this is a bad time because of you losing your friend and everything, but it's really important to me. Why, Tony? Because I want to know more about my dad. My mom told me that, that Bill used to have all of these, these fishing trips he needed to go on, and he hired my dad to be a guide and organize the whole thing for him and his business clients. And I was just wondering if you knew, is there any way I can find out who the rest of the men in this picture are? I don't know. I can't help you. They were all strictly business associates at Bill's, and I, I never met them, and I never knew their names. Then this is a dead end? I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. Thank you. Well, don't uh, get up. I'll see myself out. Tony? Yes, ma'am? How old were you when your father left, dear? About seven. Why? Must have been very hard on you. Yeah, it kind of still is. That's why it's so important to me to find out what happened. 
Well, I can't help you because I don't know. Bill used to go on those fishing trips every year. And when he came back from the last trip, he just was so moody and he sat around and he wouldn't tell me anything about it. My mom told me that my dad acted the same way when he got back from that trip. I, mean, I thought it was only me, but it bothers you too, doesn't it? Well, yes, because... because I never knew why. Let's just change the subject. I'm going to get us a pot of hot coffee. It'll be fine, thank you. Got to have something to do with the woman in the picture. She's beautiful, and men do a lot of crazy things for a beautiful woman. There she is. Oh, hi, Marie. Hello, dear. I've been waiting for you. Oh, sorry. Sit down. I've got a surprise for you. What is it? You'll see. Close your eyes. Okay, okay, look. Isn't that the most beautiful lace yeah, you've ever it's seen? gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, where did you get that? Well, your great Aunt Mary brought this back from Ireland when she went there with the church group. And since she was your godmother, dear, I want you to have this for your wedding dress. I wish you'd been my godmother. It's going to make a beautiful wedding dress. Oh, yes, it is. We'll start looking for a pattern right away. You want to make my dress? Well, sure, honey. Why not? Well, look, Mom, I mean, uh, um, it, it's too much trouble, really, and it's quick. I mean, we don't have very much time, and I've got a, a dress here that I found, you know, uh, one here in the book. Um, they have it down at the department store, you oh, know. No, it's not any trouble here, but if you don't want me to, I'll make curtains out of them or something. Mom, I want you to make my wedding dress. I really do, and I, it's going to be the best wedding dress anybody ever had. No good. We'll go shopping for a pattern tomorrow. Okay, great, great. Uh, where's Tony? Oh, your brother left a note saying he was going over to Burt's for some reason. Oh, that stupid jerk. Maureen! I told him not to go bothering Burt with those pictures, and he did it anyway. You mean the pictures from Dad's old camera? Yeah. Well, why would he show it to Burt Bauer? My fault. I told your brother that one of the men in the picture had to be um, Bill Barrow, who was Bert's ex-husband, because he was the one that arranged all those fishing trips. You mean Ed's father knew Dad? Right. Nobody ever said anything to me about that before. Well, why should they? It's not going to bring Dad back. And there was no need for Tony to go over and bother Bert with all those pictures. I mean, I told him that she had just lost a very dear friend and that he should leave her alone. Oh, honey, I think it was just something he had to do. Oh, I'm sure that Bird knows how to take care of herself. I just wish your brother never found that camera in those pictures. Well, so do I. It was bad enough that you had to see him. Look, it isn't bad. It happened. Yeah, she's right. I was upset a little bit when I saw them, but I'm, I'm fine. I'm all right about it now. Just wish your brother was. Yeah. Look, he just wants to know who the men are in the picture. I think it's only natural. I'm a little curious myself. No, no, it's not natural. I mean, Tony's just obsessed with those pictures, and he's losing interest in everything else. Oh, well, the real problem is your brother was not over Susie. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, he seems so lost. You know, ever since he found those pictures, he's hardly been over a company at all. He's, he's letting Floyd do all the work. It's strange. It's strange that Tony would let company go. Hmm. Well, he is. It's not, that's not good. Mm -mm. You know, I got an idea. Oh, no. Stop it. Maureen. <laughs> listen. Do you like the way the company is decorated? Uh -huh. I don't know. It's all right. Yeah. You don't think it's bland, or...? Um, well, yeah, it's very bland. Maureen? I hate it. I, I know. It, it's, it's ugly. Like, I mean, it's, it's no, ugly. I never really liked so, it very much myself. And the, look, I, I got an idea that's going to give Tony a whole new light on company. I was also thinking that maybe Alan Michael and I could move in here with you for a few days. I mean, that's if, if you want, you know, really? so you can get acclimated, you know. Well, what would Alan say? Well, I, I, I'm, I, I'll explain it to you. I'm sure I'll understand. 
Well, I really could use an experienced hand. I could use all the help I could get, as a matter of fact. All right. We <laughs> could. Oh, Ellen. Hello, Amanda. Oh? We were just talking about you. Were you? What's going on? Uh, I've changed my mind. I'm not leaving after all. Oh, I'm delighted <laughs> to hear that. Hope, uh, I've been trying to reach you all morning. Where have you been? Well, she's been helping me. You might as well know. Come here. He's beautiful, isn't he? Is this Jennifer's baby? Yes. Where's Jennifer? She's gone. For how long? For good. She left him here on Friday with a note saying that she didn't want him and that she was going somewhere where no one could find her. Now, wait a minute. Jennifer can't just leave town and saddle you with her baby. Oh, He's no. her responsibility. Alan, you don't understand. She doesn't want him and there's no one else to take care of him. But it's all right. I, I'm glad to have him. Well, I can certainly arrange something. I wish you would let me know when it first happened. I guess I didn't because I knew how you'd react. I am keeping Matthew myself. Please. Amanda, that's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous, oh, Alan. Yes. Amanda's made her decision. I think it's a wonderful one. I'm going to take Matthew into the other room and put him down. Yes, to go to sleep. That's all right, sweetheart. I'll be back. Come on, Angel. Oh, what a big yawn. Yeah. Alan, don't be so hard on her. And don't you ever contradict me in front of my children again. Alan, I am not trying to contradict you. I am only trying to explain to you Amanda's side of the situation. Believe me, I know what's best for my daughter. And I don't like to have my wife making me look like an ogre when I'm trying to explain it. But Alan, you weren't trying to explain anything. You were trying to get her to give up the child. You're treating it like an inanimate object. Hope, think about this. Mark Evans brought Amanda nothing but misery. Now his son's going to do the same thing. Amanda doesn't look very miserable to me, Alan. And how's she going to feel if she becomes attached to the child and Jennifer suddenly wants him back? Do you think she's going to be able to give him up? Look, all right, we've already discussed that. Amanda said that she's willing to cope with that situation if it should happen. Oh, that's wonderful. You've discussed it with Amanda and you didn't even call me. Look, we, I told her that you would have to be told about it. Oh, that's gracious of you. Now you're telling my children how to deal with me? Alan, what has gotten into you? You're telling me what to say, what to do. I mean, all I'm doing is trying to help you. None of this would be happening if you'd just stay out of my business. Alan, I have always thought that your business was mine as well. Not anymore, Hope. Not after this. What is going on in here? I could hear Alan clear in the other room. Uh, don't worry about it. Nothing of the, uh, none of this has anything to do with you. Well, I do worry about it. You and Alan have always been so happy. I don't want to see anything spoil that. You are happy, aren't you, Hope? Well... I, uh, I thought we were, but now I don't think I know him very much anymore. Please, please don't let me come between you two. Uh, look, you're not, you're not doing anything of the kind. It's, Amanda, none of this has anything to do with you, all right? The role of Rick Bauer is now being played by Michael O'Leary. Oh, my goodness. 10.30 in the morning and Rick Bauer just getting up? Morning, Phil. What's the matter? Are you sick? No, I'm not sick. I'm, uh, just enjoying myself while I can before school starts. Mm-hmm. See, that's kind of funny. I, I didn't even think you enjoyed sleeping late. It's, it's one of those things about your character that's, well, that's always concerned me. Well, uh, you can put your mind at ease, because I do. Mm-hmm. Cup of coffee? Sure, go ahead. A letter from Morgan this morning. Seems like she's left town. Yeah, I got one, too. Sounds like she made the right decision. Yeah? Did you talk to her before she left? No, I didn't get a chance. I was uh, looking for you. Sorry. I didn't mean to shake everybody up like that by, uh, by taking off. Yeah. Well, I know that Professor Bruner's death was real hard on you. It was hard on everybody. Grandma really appreciated you coming to the funeral. It's weird. It's the first funeral I've ever been to. <laughs> 